Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight I'm going to uh, make a video on the request of a customer that purchased some of my lathe tools from my lathe grinding service. I'm going to say thank you to Michael, uh, and uh, he gave the inspiration for this video, asking uh, a few questions on how he would go about honing his tools after he got them. Um, you'll get the tools sharp as a tack, and they will be uh, flawless right out of the box, but there will become an instance where they become dull. And um, to prevent this, uh, we try and uh, hone the tools, um, not necessarily every time you use it, but um, at predetermined periods, depending on um, the material and other logistics that uh, this video is not going to cover. But uh, the, the general idea is, is if you uh, present a sharp tool in the first place, uh, it does the work more efficiently, and uh, th there's many reasons to do it. Um, my stance is if you are uh, using a roughing tool, um, there is not a lot of uh, sense in my book in fretting over um, over polishing a roughing tool. Um, you are going to basically be um, beating that tool up, in my opinion. Um, the first time you make it, by all means, uh, make it as sharp as you desire. Um, hone it up, all that good stuff, but uh, believe it, it, it really is not going to mean anything in the general scheme of things if it is a roughing tool. Um, a finishing tool, I would uh, depart by uh, adding the opinion that uh, you cannot get a finishing tool sharp enough, in my opinion. Um, you can do uh, whatever length uh, or desire you wish to go to to uh, get that honed uh, to a razor's edge. Um, that will impart the uh, best finish um, is a sharp tool. So um, with that end, uh, we'll start with the video here. Um, he, there's many different ways, and I, I cannot claim that this is the best or the only way of doing things. This is just how I've become accustomed to doing things, and um, uh, it has uh, served well for the small lathe and uh, the Unimat especially, which um, is even more critical um, to make sharp tools, otherwise you do not cut well at all and um, uh, the less horsepower that you have obviously the more uh, acute your uh, uh, cutting edges must be um, <clears throat> as far as stones go i generally um, will use one of three stones at any one time here uh, what i have here is the the first stone that usually gets hit which is an arkansas soft stone um, I'm remiss. I do not know what grit this is, but it is a commercial uh, by Smiths. Um, it, it doesn't have to be by these people at all. Um, you, you want something soft for the, the, the initial. Um, secondary to this, um, I, I just 3D printed a holder for a very inexpensive stone that I had uh, purchased on eBay. Um, it is ruby on one side, and um, uh, I believe this is quartz on the other side. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, this is some 3000 grit, and I believe the uh, ruby is some 1000 grit but don't quote me on that. Um, they, they are quite fine, though, is, is the point. Um, don't get too hung up on the grits. Um, you know, obviously, the finer the grit, the uh, sharper the edge will be, but there will be a point if you go past razor sharp, um, there becomes uh, rolling over of edges and all kinds of stuff that we really don't want to encounter. So we're, we're going to keep it right there, basically, like razor sharp, <laughs> if, if at all possible. Um, how I do that, 
um, regular oil on the stones. Um, I suppose you could use water. Um, I, I've never really used water. I've always been accustomed to using oil. Um, there could probably be arguments of both ways. Um, I'm not going to make any of them. Um, I use just whatever oil is available. Do not get hung up uh, too much, in my opinion, um, on what type of oil you use. I put way too much oil on it for what I'm going to be doing right now, so I'll probably do something you're not supposed to do is cross-contaminate like that, but I really don't think it's going to matter on these lazy bits. All right, so what I will do is we take uh, pick an edge it really does not matter where you start I like to start on the top and I, I don't really want to put a lot of pressure downwards on it um, just basically gliding along and um, when everything's right I would actually hold this a little bit differently but it's a little awkward and camera so I'm sorry if I move around a little bit here but the idea is is well, that might be a pretty good indicator too if you're moving your uh, stone around too much you might be putting too much pressure on it but uh, and then I would uh, rotate to the other direction find where the happy place is and give a few strokes back and forwards that way and then come back obviously and you could feel the keenness of that edge um, the way that this tool is designed um, should you somehow completely wreck the tip of this tool um, basically all you need to do is put this back in a grinder at a um, uh, depending on the uh, end relief uh, usually between 8 and 10 degrees and you could uh, come in perpendicular to the wheel and basically it would reform that tip once again that um, even if it was completely damaged or blown up or whatever I could bring that back really quick and so can you um, you aren't going to do it with a stone, you're going to need a grinder for that purpose, but um, uh, just a point of clarification there. Um, so, uh, since we have two of these uh, edges already done, we'll come back over here, kind of find a happy place, and try not to dip, and you'll feel it when everything's nice. If you feel a lot of drag, or if there's a lot of tipping, or anything to that effect, uh, it will show up uh, in the end result. But uh, you really got to mess up. To these are not really hard stones. Uh, this one is not. Now the ruby here, um, it gets a little bit harder here. We're going to come back over here and basically rinse and repeat. Now it is probably a good idea to secure your uh, stones a little bit better because you can slip and um, it is razor sharp and it will whack you. Don't ask me how I know that. Okay, so I don't really usually like to go straight at it. I like to, you know, cock it one way or the other, whatever feels nice. And um, I will give that edge a home. So this is to 1,000 grit if you believe all the hoopla or whatever. I don't have a gauge to um, uh, say whether it is or not, but it is a very fine stone. And um, now we are razor sharp all the way around. Well, the problem with razor sharp is uh, sometimes it will impart lines uh, into the work that we're dealing with. So, and uh, it also creates kind of a stress riser that wants to be knocked off. So what we like to do is give it just a little bit of a, uh, a radius. So what I will physically do is physically take the stone, put it in a different plane, and kind of give it a, you find the happy place on the stone where the angle feels right, and just kind of give it a drag one direction and then follow the drag back the other direction and you don't really want to put a lot of pressure or anything like that but if you 
put your finger across it, you can feel that there is just the slightest of roundness. Now, um, if we're going to use this tool in this orientation to be cutting towards the headstock, we don't care about nothing else. But the nice thing about this tool is it can be rotated 90 degrees and it could be used as a facing tool or it could be used as a tool that cuts towards the headstock. Well, in that event, we're going to want this edge also to be nice and honed. So this is a method that you can do as well. I'm dragging it in the flat plane. It doesn't always feel as natural to me to do it in that way, but it does accomplish the same thing. And you can do it as much or as little as you want, as long as you don't overdo it. And what that does is that makes that uh, surface slightly radius and uh, it will uh, make a better finish as well as um, have a longer expectancy of life. That is um, basically the same for all of the tools that I do. Um, uh, we want to keep like these type of finishing tools very, very sharp and they will uh, cut for a long time um, if you're to do this uh, periodically in between um, uh, metals or even jobs or whatever um, it would bring the edges back and a sharper tool is a more efficient tool it's enough for the uh, square tools let's go to the rounded tool here now the rounded tool um, is not a whole lot different um, it, it, this could be used in the negative aspect and um, uh, cut. Um, it may be useful for uh, uh, facing uh, some, I don't know, maybe a cast iron or something to that effect with a negative rake. But generally this tool is made to uh, cut towards the headstock. So we want to make sure that this front edge is very sharp. Um, anytime usually that I'm uh, dealing with a... Uh, rounded tool, I kind of find the happy place, give it a few strokes, roll it, give it a few strokes, roll it, okay? And then basically I'll do the same thing. Happy place, find the happy place. Okay, just to cap the capabilities of cutting on the low side of it, uh, should go back to this and I'll give it kind of a cross the stone in the happy place you feel it and then give it a few of those and then that pretty much pronounces that edge right there okay so then we're gonna refine it now that wanted to dig in just a little bit so we're gonna change our angle so the idea when you're doing this, if you're uh, dragging the tool across it, not necessarily a good idea. Um, you might want to tilt it at a slight angle skew. Keep it moving. Don't leave it working on just one part of your stone because that's one way of uh, wearing out your stone in one part. Okay. And then that uh, goes back to uh, being pretty razor sharp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back on the top here, find its happy place, get a little drag, okay, give it a little skew, and then for sure, it just, uh, that is its happy place. And I say happy place a lot because uh, all of these angles have already been um, uh, put into it. So if you drag too hard or do anything, you know, that doesn't feel right, if your stone starts dragging around in the first place, it might be the first indication that you're, you, you might be putting too much pressure or dragging around on it the wrong direction. Um, sometimes you got to make mistakes before you um, climb the hill, and that's just the way it is. Uh, 